Welcome to my channel. I'm Chris and today I have a video for you. Today I'm talking about why I left Seattle. Overall, this video will probably resonate with a lot of you who either lived in Seattle before or currently live there. And I think this will be helpful for anybody who's thinking about moving here anytime in the future. The grievances that I have with Seattle are pretty common to most people who either live in the area or have lived in it. All you have to do is just check a Seattle subreddit to kind of find out some of these. Uh, in general, I left for three reasons, in no particular order, the homelessness and crime, cost of living, and just lifestyle preferences. The first one that I'm going to talk about is homelessness and crime, not because it's the biggest one, but just because I want to get it out of the way first. And then I'll talk about the cost of living and then also some lifestyle differences that come with not living in Seattle versus with living in Seattle. So stay tuned because this will be kind of an interesting video. First things first, I moved to downtown Seattle in the spring of 2021. Fresh out of college, excited to live here. This was the place where I wanted to live pretty much since I was 10 years old. I thought it was the most beautiful city in the world. I loved the area, the mountains, just how fresh the air seemed with all the rain that we get. Plus it only snows once or twice a year, which is great because you get a little bit of that snow to enjoy, but you don't get so much of it that it's like, you know, a problem. I came from Chicago, so the winters were definitely better in Seattle. That being said, I left the city. There were several reasons for me leaving, but I'll break it down into three parts. Homelessness and crime, cost of living, and lifestyle preferences. The first reason I left seems to be the one that gets people most riled up. I'm just going to talk about it to get it out of the way. Part of the reason why I left Seattle is due to the homeless crisis and due to crime. While I believe most of the city is fine, I lived right along 3rd Avenue and I'll tell you what, within the year and a half or about two years that I was there, I witnessed one individual pull out a knife and start threatening a group of others, I saw the aftermath of one shooting, and also, one day I woke up to reading a news article about a woman who got hit by a baseball bat about a block away from where I was living. But when you hear stories like that, it doesn't make me feel safe. It's like, oh great, I might not even see the person coming. That, and one morning I was walking to go to one of my favorite cafes, you know, start work right, and there was a naked woman yelling in the streets and you know, when you're just waking up in the morning and you want to have that nice brew of coffee, you know, with a croissant or something, it's not really the way you want to start your day, you know? Um, so it's experiences like that that I never personally felt in danger, but it was definitely uncomfortable. That just made me think maybe downtown isn't right for me. And one issue with downtown Seattle is that Seattle itself on a national scale has the third highest homeless population in the nation. New York is number one, LA is number two, and Seattle is number three. And Seattle only has about one-tenth of the population. Well, not even that. It has less than a tenth of the population of those two other cities. And one thing about Seattle that you should know, especially if you want to move to the downtown area, is that Seattle's homeless seem to be congregated in the downtown areas. In a place like Chicago, where I'm from, you visit downtown and there's many tourists. There are no tents on the side. Um, there are other reasons too, such as weather. But when you visit Seattle, you walk downtown and essentially any road that you're walking on, eventually you'll probably run into a tent or a homeless person sleeping on the side or just passed out. It's kind of, it's really sad to see and it, you know, it doesn't make you feel good when you're walking downtown because you have all these visible problems and there doesn't seem to be any actual solutions. It's like the politicians of Seattle it's almost like they want there to be homeless so that way they could say that they're trying to address it. Because um, if you fix the homeless issues, I bet our politicians won't have much to run on. I do believe most of the city is fine. I just lived right along 3rd Avenue. And for those who are looking to move to Seattle, avoid 3rd Avenue. If you don't already know, 3rd Avenue in downtown is known as a busy street for buses and public transportation. While public transit is great and all, here and there throughout 3rd Avenue, you'll see open air drug markets or open drug usage. And the buses along the street provide a convenient means of transporting drugs and they provide shelter from the weather. Uh, this makes a perfect storm for drug usage and the crime that comes along with it. Don't get me wrong, Seattle has one of the most beautiful downtowns of any city. 
but the homelessness and despair that you see really it detracts from the entire experience. That and unlike the homeless of Chicago or New York, the homeless of Seattle seem much more unpredictable. I believe a lot of this is because Seattle is much less strict on public intoxication, uh, especially when it comes to intoxication due to hard drugs like fentanyl or meth. Of course, not all of Seattle is bad. Just for whatever reason, the downtown area has an unusually high concentration of drug, drug addicts. Although if you want to live downtown and don't want to deal with the publicly intoxicated, the area directly around the Amazon Spheres and the nearby Westlake Whole Foods is one of the most sanitized areas in downtown. This probably has something to do with Amazon being there, but I'm not sure why it's so clean. All right, that's enough complaining about the homelessness and crime. I wanted to get that out of the way first, uh, just because it's something that most people seem to agree with or argue about. But now it's time to get to probably the biggest reason why I actually left Seattle, and that would be the cost of living. For reference, I paid nearly $2,600 a month just for my one bedroom, 500 square foot apartment with an additional $250 a month for parking and roughly about $200 a month for utilities and whatnot. I was on a higher floor in my building, so I did have a cool view, but I spent most of my time looking at my laptop or just cooking. During these times, it became painfully obvious how small a space I occupied. If I wanted to upgrade to a two bedroom, which is what I was looking to do, or even if I just wanted a one bedroom with a den, I'd have to pay northwards of $4,000 a day to stay around downtown. So if you want to live in downtown Seattle and you can only afford a one bedroom, it's fine for those who want to live minimally, but I like to have things and I don't want to have to rent storage in order to have space for my hobbies. Of course, I could have moved outside of downtown and stayed in Seattle, but even then a two bedroom would still cost me north of $3,000 per month. And for me, that really wasn't worth it. And speaking of which, the cost of living also kind of bleeds into the next reason why I left, which was lifestyle. See, with 500 square feet of space, that really doesn't give you much space for hobbies like I mentioned before. And a part of that is I wanted more space to have more room for my hobbies to be able to have things so I could have fun and you know do things other than sit at my desk or play video games. On one hand, downtown gives me better access to amenities, shopping, seeing friends, but during five days of the week, I'm at home working. When I was downtown, I really thought about it and I'd rather have a bigger place outside of downtown that gives me more space to pursue my interests than a small place downtown. While I do have to give up going to a cafe each day, I now have a kitchen with four times the countertop space and have my own espresso machine so I can make my coffee exactly how I like it. Plus, now I only need to go shopping every two weeks, don't have to pay for parking, and get so much extra room for hosting guests. The list kind of goes on and on, but those are some of the biggest things. And overall, it is nice to have a larger space. I feel like I'm a lot less cramped, and for me, it also helps me just working, because now I can actually have a dedicated desk set up. Before, I had a desk with all my gaming stuff, all my files, all cramped into one corner, so I really only had room for one monitor. Now I can have a true setup, and it really helps me both with working and in my personal life. But overall, while I did leave downtown Seattle, I still live in the area. I still believe that Washington is one of the most beautiful states in the nation. We have the mountains, we have the Puget Sound, we have the city of Seattle itself, and though I won't return to Seattle, at least for the next couple years, I always have the option to make weekend trips, because I think Seattle is still a really beautiful city and it's an amazing city to visit. Living there long term? Maybe not, unless if you have the money to afford $4,000 a month for a thousand square foot two bedroom. Otherwise, you could live in the suburbs and have the same benefits of living in Seattle without some of the negatives. While I did leave Seattle, I still really love the area. So I actually ended up moving to a suburb about 20 minutes outside of the city. I pay slightly more for housing than when I lived in Seattle, but now I get four times the space and feel so much freer than I did when I was in the city. Do I sometimes miss living in downtown? Yes. But because of the crime and homelessness, the cost of living, and the lifestyle I get now, I don't intend on moving back for at least the next couple years. The nice thing about moving to a suburb is I can also visit the city whenever I want. 
Even on a weekday, if I ever wanted dinner in the city or just to visit some friends, I could just drive there or pretty soon I might be able to take a light rail downtown. Personally, I like being able to access all the benefits of living near Seattle without the negatives that are associated with it. But if you're planning on moving in Seattle, I wouldn't discourage you from moving to downtown. It's still really beautiful. Just keep in mind that there are some negatives, but also keep in mind that what you read online is often highly inflated. People seem to act like there's homeless on every corner. And while there are a lot of homeless, it's not like it is every corner. In general, I just avoid Third Avenue. And if you don't want to see any homeless, then the Amazon spheres everywhere around there seems to be super sanitized, which a lot of people don't like, but I think is kind of cool because you have a lot of new buildings, it feels really clean, and it's just kind of a cool part of the city to hang out in. So what do you think? Do you currently live in Seattle? Are you planning on moving to Seattle? Or did you live in Seattle in the past? Let me know what you think about my reasons for leaving. And if you left Seattle, let me know your reasons. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video or found it informative, please like and subscribe, comment down below and watch some of my other videos. I always appreciate all the engagement and I enjoy reading every comment that I get. With that, I hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video.